there are a handful of people, as you know, who have the one name. Yep. There was Prince, yep. there was Cher, there yep. was Madonna, yep. Whitney. Yeah. But they don't have nine number one hits, eight Grammys, eight American Music Awards, nine Soul Train Awards, 18 Billboard Music Awards, mm -hmm. and over 100 million records sold around the world. Right. Some of those names, I'm sure, were people you looked up to. Yep. But they don't have this. So the imagination that was allowed to live and thrive yep. from your mother, from your grandmother, yep. is why I have this long list. It's a gift and a curse, actually. Really? Yeah, because if you don't take the time to enjoy all those moments, then you can't appreciate it, right? Do you appreciate me when, it, when I name those things? I saw something in your eye. I didn't know if I was reading that you were shy, are you embarrassed, are you processing? What does that feel like? It's amazing that something that came through you mattered that much to someone else to be able to buy it, celebrate it, and enjoy it. But like I said, it is a bit of a gift and a curse because- What's the curse part? I think people would wonder that instantly. If you choose to uh, point at a tangible thing, like I want money, Mm -hmm. or I want to sell this amount of records, or I want to have this amount of fans, or I want to see this thing. When you see this thing, is it over? Mm -hmm. So the gift and the curse is the pursuit of it. For me, it was never a pursuit of a thing. Mm -hmm. So I never could stop and say, man, number one records, okay, I did it, it's great. I'm like, okay, great, let's keep going, what's yeah. next? <laughs> you know, um, for me, uh, the journey yeah. was the destination. The fact that I could do it, the fact yeah. that I can do these things, the fact that I can celebrate, the fact that I can use or either still have the talent to be able to share. Yeah. So, yeah, I love all of that. And my mom, she's always like, you realize what you've done? I'm like, uh, no, I do, but I don't. And I don't want to, because if I recognize what I've done, then I can't get to what I'm going to do. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? That's, I that's, love that. That's so much more. You know what I mean? You know, it's crazy, too. I'm watching and looking at your name, a very distinct name given to you by your family. And when you burst on the scene, it was so mispronounced that you had to actually sing it. It wasn't As mispronounced. It's, it's still Ursha. <laughs> it all depends on where you are. It's, you, well, you we're from the South, South Ursher. Ursher. <laughs> you were definitely Ursher. It's still Ursher. <laughs> but you had to spell it for the rest of the world to understand outside of I the South. I want to make sure you got it right. You know what I'm saying? They call me U-S-H-E-R. You know what I'm uh, saying? <laughs> and that, I mean, you went from spelling the name and getting us to say it right a little bit most of the time. Yeah to it just being a stamp. It's a brand. You're a brand. Thank and you. it means excellence. It means joy. It's timeless. It's fun. Resilient. Yeah. You want to know the truth? Yeah. Um, I actually ran from it in the beginning. Why? Because I just, you, I, here's an honest to God truth. I just got tired of going to like gas stations and never seeing the name Usher. I would always, like, you know, they have cups. You'd like see Jen, <laughs> you'd see Julie, you'd see Dave, you'd see Sam. I'm like, <laughs> Usher is never anywhere. Try There's never, it, Right. <laughs> no, but for me, I guess I wanted to make it mean something. This is a longer conversation, but, you know, I'm not being raised by my father, who I was named after. I only had the name to look at. I didn't have the father to supply me with the idea of what it was to be Usher. So I had to create it. I said, all right, well, I'm gonna make this name mean something. The name that you guys make fun of, all of the kids who used to joke, yeah. like your name is Usher? <laughs> <laughs> Usher, what kind of name is who that? Who named you, right? Who named you? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna make it mean something. I'll make it mean what I want it to mean. And I'll. And if it, if it represents excellence, I appreciate that. So when you see it, what does it mean to you? I mean, universally superhero, excellent rave. <laughs> <laughs> Was that an ad lib? You've been thinking about that. No, I, been, right I can see you in the bathroom like, when oh, somebody asked me. <laughs> the R would be ridiculous. No, uh, originally I had another idea of a name for myself. You were going to change your name? No, I wasn't going to change my name. I actually had another name as an artist because I was with a group when I first started. Yeah, yeah. And the new beginning was the name of my group. Mm -hmm. And my name was Cha-Cha. So I was like, I want to be named Cha-Cha. I want people to remember me as Cha-Cha. 
So thank God we decided <laughs> to stick with Usher. You Can you saying? imagine us walking in this room and cha cha everywhere? Cha 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 cha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we would be here if you'd selected cha cha. No, I don't it think, I don't think to, it would have worked out the same. It all had to happen. The universe <laughs> conspired to make it happen this way. Yeah. So you believed that this could happen. You had your idea in mind. You had your inspiration. I was unwavering. Yeah. This was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. The conditions of my reality had to change. I wanted my life to be different. I wanted what I would represent to be something that would be that I could be proud of, that people could be proud of. You know, I didn't get the love that I wanted from my father, so I sought to get the love from the world. So on stage tonight. Yeah. You will feel that love. I do. In an incredible way. Yeah. And as much as a mother can offer love to um, a child, there's nothing like a father's love. Yeah. You know, there's something about, right, this time and this idea. Like every time we, you know, there's accolades. Hey, hey mom, I made it. Yeah. Where's dad? Yeah. We almost forget about dad. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a well, dad no, and advocating for dads. Well, no, but I was going to say, you've got four little people who, well, two older kids and two little people who are saying, that's dad. But well, do they even know dad is Usher? They do. <laughs> but they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. They, they, they could they Not could even the older down. boys? They don't care. Come on. My boys, um, they, they enjoy it, you know, because I have one son, Cinco, yeah. who does not like to be called Usher. Um... <laughs> who tries to get away from it. But, you know, and then another son, uh, Naveed, who really does love entertainment and music. I think he, he looks, he watches the shows and gives he you does. notes, is that he, true? He, not only does he watch my show, but he gives me critiques. Oh. Yes, and he's like, you did, you missed this thing, you didn't do this. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. I'm not supposed to do it the same way every night. <laughs> what is that like to have your son critiquing Cisco. the show? <laughs> uh, but hey, if, if it's inspiration to yeah. him, then great. And if it's making him feel compelled to be creative, then great. Like the is Ush he an books. entertainer or is he going to be a manager? What what is what's the line? Here? His idea is to take the U and turn it upside down and make it an N. Oh, Naveed. Naveed. Because he has a unique name, and I yeah. tell him because he's like, I didn't get the name Usher. It's like you didn't need it. Usher got it. You got Naveed. How many Naveeds do you know? It's true. Right, so let's make this. He's got his own something. brand. It's yeah, not Cha Cha. You, you ain't Cha Cha. You <laughs> far from Cha Cha, bro. Now you have the two kids now. Yeah. Ages two. Yeah, two and one. And one. Yeah. Sovereign. Sovereign. And Sire. Yeah, Sire Ra. Mm -hmm. What is it like having two little ones now at this point? They keep me young. Yeah. Yeah. How do you balance this residency, this experience, this emergence? You know, experience is very important to you. Yeah. With now, because you have two sets of kids in the sense of age. Yeah. You've got older kids and then you've got little ones. So yeah. things you didn't know the first time around, you know this time around. It's dedication, it's time. I try my hardest to uh, base my schedule around the times that they're not in school. Uh -huh. My youngest, uh, one and two year olds, they're here. And my boys uh, are now less interested in spending time with me, oddly. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. Yeah, unless I'm You're taking like, them to I'm, a concert I'm, I'm or either cool. paying for something that they want. <laughs> Coming up. Usher goes there, getting deeply personal about his girlfriend, Jennifer, the mother of his two children, and what he did to celebrate his 44th birthday. Plus, what Usher has to say to anyone who believes R&B is over. You've not seen anything until you come to this show and you understand that R&B <laughs> will never be dead. I love dead. it. I love it. Your mind is constantly devouring and developing ideas it seems yeah you know what it's a it's a, a problem to turn off uh, so you have a hard time turning off. I, I do but here is the reality uh, I file very very well and I do that by way of meditation mm -hmm. you know um, how often do you meditate um, I meditate at least three times a day um, I'd like to be able to meditate 20 minutes at a time, mm -hmm. but it's very hard yeah, to get I it. Understand. Well, you have so, children, you've got a career, you've got all these things going on. Do you email your team in the middle of the night ideas? Do absolutely. I, I don't email as much. I'm a text dude. And yeah, I'll come up with an idea while working on a record. If I hear something inspired, have an idea, I'll beatbox or whatever it might be. But I'm always thinking, always staying open, never closed. I don't know if it's easy to turn off. Right. When you allow yourself to be a vessel in that way and stay open, God has a very, very 
uh, unique way and, and unique timing. Mm -hmm. So you have to be available. You have to allow yourself to stay open to be able to, to uh, receive whatever it is. It's listening. A lot of people talk. Yeah. A lot of people say, you, I hear you, but are you really listening? Yeah. And if you're listening to life, it'll definitely, the universe is always telling us something. It's always offering us something, some direction. But if you allow yourself to be open enough to receive it, then you'll be where yeah. you need to be. Well, but part and you'll of do what you need to do, you know? I don't want to feel like I've cracked the code on life and have some that's okay. higher learning or higher Oh, why won't you? You like should. That. But I will say this. I think that's a. I think people want to hear you say that because I think life is a mystery and how you but get to this more than point. likely, within that mystery, we have curiosity. Yeah. And we should play into that curiosity. We shouldn't listen to the world telling you that you can't do something. Yeah. You gotta believe that you can, and if you don't believe it, nobody else will. I just told myself that as a kid, like, hey, if you don't believe it, no one else will. Yeah. So stick to it. Because you know? on stage, you know, we see you laugh and your joy, but you are a very serious person, a very deliberate and thoughtful person. Yeah, I'm working on that. <laughs> to have more fun, yeah. you know what I'm You're saying? You're working on it? Yeah, you know, I, th I think I've always... You just celebrated a big birthday. Anita Baker singing, yeah. Jermaine Dupri. Yeah, yeah. Yo, by the way, every night is intended to feel as though it is, like, an elevated experience. Yeah. I have a lot of special guests. Yeah. But my birthday night yeah. was something... Uh, Anita Baker. Anita Baker. Yo, by the way, I had no idea that this was happening. They surprised you? They completely surprised me. And Anita came out. I didn't know what was getting ready to happen, but she sang happy birthday to me. And Anita Baker don't sing happy birthday or sing for anybody. anybody. So I was like, yeah, I don't know if I can top this one. Did you cry? Because I was, I was trying to get a glimpse of it. You seemed like you were in shock. I was, I was shocked. Uh -huh. uh, it, 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 it would be shocking to know that I am such an avid and diehard fan of Anita Baker. Yeah. And then the, the night before, I, we also too brought Chris Brown out. Yeah, which is so special. Yeah. Um, I love Chris mm -hmm. and have always been a supporter of him, of him from the beginning of his career and just really wanted him to recognize his greatness. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's great for our fans to say it, but when we say it to each other, yeah. when we recognize it, like, James Brown ordained me the godson of soul. Mm -hmm. And a week before, I think it was, uh, he ordained Michael Jackson as the new godfather. Mm -hmm. When we have these moments to yeah. be able to share with our brothers and our sisters yeah. that work in this industry, hip hop has always been about that. It's always mm -hmm. been about that cultural community yeah. thing. But R&B, it ain't always been that way. When they say R&B is dead, and you know people I don't say that. I don't believe that, I, and no one does. Right. No, no one, no one believes that. that. As a matter of fact, I think that that's just some sort of clickbait to just make people pay more attention to R&B than they should. <laughs> because it's great. And if you know R&B the way I do and you've seen it in Las Have Vegas. Have they seen your audience? I'm like, come on. You've not seen anything until you come to this show and you understand that <laughs> R&B will never be I love there. it. I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, I got to ask you, Jennifer posted when you announced the residency. And it was so touching. She said, it was very simple. Your girlfriend said, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Because she has been there with me through my hardest times. Yeah. She, single-handedly, has been one of the only ones that I can know unwaveringly has had my back, as I have hers. And I'm very, very fortunate to be able to uh, share this time of success yeah. with her and our children together yeah. and our life together. She is a, a forever partner. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the journey uh, that I'm having, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to have had it without her support. So, so she ain't a manager. She, she's just literally <laughs> yeah. one of the greatest partners so you I think I've love, ever had. You got the most yeah. epic residency that we've seen in a very long time. You may have single-handedly brought, you know, the love back to all of Las Vegas. Yep. Beautiful family, this immersive experience, all of the awards, all of the accolades. What's next? The journey is the destination. <laughs> the journey is the destination. It ain't over. <laughs> I love it. The party's not over.